Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the controversial ingredient talc in personal care products, including skincare. As you all know, uh, two days ago, Johnson & Johnson announced it would no longer be selling uh, talc-based baby powder in the U.S. And this is in the wake of a lot of litigation against Johnson & Johnson about claims of talc and ovarian cancer risk. So I'm going to talk all about that in today's video. It's a non-porous, chemically inert substance. It has a crystalline structure and the crystals can slide past one another very easily. And so what that translates to in skincare products is it allows for things to not only lubricate the skin, but also kind of give a silky smooth finish, which is desirable in a lot of makeup products. It absorbs oil and it prevents caking, so it's an anti-caking agent. The amount of talc in products will vary substantially from product to product, with some products having just a small amount and others being close to 100% talc. Talc has been used in cosmetics for so many years, dating back to the ancient, ancient Egypt, actually. So 5,000 years ago, the Egyptians were using talc uh, to do their makeup. But how safe is talc in our skincare products? To be honest, most people tolerate talc in personal care products just fine with very few to no side effects. While talc is generally well tolerated in personal care products that you'd be putting on the skin, like makeup and whatnot, there is a risk if you apply talc to a braided skin or a wound that the talc will get into the deeper layers of the skin and cause what's called a foreign body granuloma. This is not super common, but it certainly can occur. In people who have what's called inner trigo, basically a type of dermatitis that happens in the skin folds. For women, this often will occur under the breasts. Um, it's frequent in abdominal folds and under the armpits. Basically, the combination of sweat, moisture, and skin-on-skin -skin contact can actually break down the skin barrier quite a bit and abrade the skin. And consumers reach for baby powders and things because they're anti-caking agents, and they want to dry up some of that moisture to help to help prevent those those rashes and also to also to provide some lubrication. Unfortunately, if the skin is is abraded there, there is a risk of these little talc granulomas forming in the skin that has been reported. So I always caution patients who have inner trigo, uh, particularly if it's severe and the skin is broken down, to avoid using talc for this reason. But it's very, it's, it's a rare complication. Serious lung complications can happen though if you inhale large volumes of talc. It can cause a serious type of lung injury. Uh, initially it may cause an asthma-like reaction and then more serious more serious lung injury down the road. This is something to that people who have occupational exposure to aerosolized talc have to protect themselves against. And the other group that that we see this in are IV drug abusers. They in, inject things uh, into their veins uh, that can then go to the lung. And many of these substances that they inject are adulterated with talc and that's where we see this type of lung injury. But to the average consumer using baby powder and makeup and whatnot, uh, it's, not, it's not something that we see unless you know you were, I mean, theoretically the risk is there with personal care products, but you would have to be like inhaling large amounts of, of your makeup uh, on a consistent basis to develop this type of problem. It's more, it's, it's an issue that we see occupa in occupational exposures and IV drug abusers, not the average consumer putting on makeup with talc. Now, what about talc and ovarian cancer? There's been a lot of controversy and concern around an association between talcum powder use in women and ovarian cancer. And the thinking there is that putting talc like in your underwear, for example, could travel up into the lower female genital tract and then up through the fallopian tubes to the ovaries, cause uh, irritation there and, and kick off a cascade that could put you at risk basically for ovarian cancer. There certainly are case reports of talc deposits in, in the ovaries of women. So this got people really worried about potentially that talc in like baby powder could cause ovarian cancer. But we have no epidemiologic evidence to support this concern. As a matter of fact, in light of all of this litigation and controversy, there was a recent large uh, study looking at all of the medical literature and all the epidemiologic studies 
on talc exposure and ovarian cancer and it found no association. So as it stands, we have no evidence of a causal association between talc exposure and personal care products and ovarian cancer. So the federal judge presiding over this collective litigation against Johnson & Johnson, I think back in April, they actually ruled that the uh, plaintiff's expert witnesses uh, could no longer present their data because it was not scientifically sound in terms of claiming that ovarian cancer was caused by talc exposure. So as it stands, I mean, we really have no, no evidence to support these claims against Johnson & Johnson that talc is causative of ovarian cancer. A lot of people are gonna be fearful anytime they hear that something is detected in the body and they're gonna associate that in their mind with harm to human health. And you know, I can tell you guys over and over again that certain ingredients, there's no evidence with the many, many years of use of the ingredient, there's no evidence of harm to human health, but some people, they're gonna hear that it's detected in the body, and to them, it's a no-go. They don't want it, they don't want it. In that case, yes, talc has been detected in the ovaries of women, um, but again, you know, I, I have no issue, I, I don't see any cause for concern around talc specifically and personal care products outside of those situations I mentioned. Putting it, you don't wanna put it on on open, wounded, abraded skin. You don't wanna inhale large quantities of it, and please do not inject talc. Uh, that's very dangerous. So, you know, outside of those situations, I, I have no concern with talc. The ingredient, uh, I think it's fine. Um, all right, what about, though, there's a lot of concern for asbestos-contaminated talc in our personal care products. Woo, that's scary. Asbestos and talc, they are both silicate minerals from the Earth's crust, and they're often in close proximity to one another. Now, the talc, cosmetic talc, is required to be free of, of asbestos. Asbestos, if you're not familiar, if you inhale it, it can cause uh, a type of cancer in the lungs called mesothelioma. And the mesothelioma doesn't show up until many, many years later, uh, but it is, it, it is bad if you, inhale, if you inhale asbestos. I wanna say back in the 70s, I actually looked at some products that had talc in them and found that they were contaminated with asbestos, but I believe the particular assays that they were using at that time were biased to, they had a high rate of false positive. But in 2018, an independent organization actually conducted testing on makeup sold at Claire's and then again at a store Justice. And this was makeup that was intended for children, you know, adolescents, children to buy. <clears throat> and they found that, those ma that makeup, the talc in that makeup was in fact contaminated with asbestos, which should not be the case. So that's worrisome, I agree. Um, you know, to be frank, unless the, the person, the child was inhaling large volumes of, of their makeup, the risk of asbestosis, mesothelioma, I mean, it's not there. You have to be inhaling a lot of it, but still, asbestos should not be in makeup. That is worrisome. So what other stuff with talc in it could be contaminated with asbestos? The FDA looked into this. Um, they looked at maybe 30, 40 random products that they just picked, makeup, personal care products, whatnot, that had talc in them and tested them for asbestos and found that they were all negative. But my goodness, like how could you possibly test every personal care product in the US that contains talc for asbestos? You really can. So the, uh, the makeup that was sold at Claire's and Justice or whatever, that, that's kind of concerning. But to what extent people are inhaling their makeup to, the, to, to expose them, their lungs to asbestos to cause mesothelioma, it, it really seems very, very unlikely. But yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be there. So that that's worrisome. And basically the FDA was like, well, these 34 products that we randomly found, that we randomly chose, there is no asbestos in those, but obviously like more, st more testing is needed, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and you have to wonder like, how are they gonna test every product with talc in it? 
Regardless, consumers are freaked out. As you will see, you've probably already seen a boom in the past few years of talc-free marketing, products free of talc. This is catering to consumer demand for talc-free products. So herein is what happened with Johnson & Johnson deciding to, to nix their baby powder with talc. It's not because their baby powder with talc was found to be associated with ovarian cancer. Their baby powder with talc it does not contain asbestos, uh, never did. And so it's not because the product was ever bad or ever caused any harm to human health that we have any evidence for. It's because consumer demand for that product went away. So what happens? They have to, they have a bottom line to meet and they're there to, to create products that consumers are going to buy, not products that consumers are afraid of and, and are not interested in. So of course, uh, they elected to stop selling, stop selling their their talc baby powder. Uh, they are still, allowing, you know, stores that have it in stock. They're still allowing them to to sell it. So it hasn't been recalled. They're just no longer going to make it and put it out there. They're going to instead do their cornstarch based one. Uh, but I want you guys to understand that that decision is not because their baby powder was ever bad or ever has ever been established as being positive of anything harmful. It's merely because with all the litigation and all the media hype and all the attention, it really causes fear mongering amongst consumers that dictates the market and what consumers want. And so, you know, now it's all about talc free. And what is going to replace talc? There are a ton of things that can replace talc. I mean, it's not the end all be all of an anti-caking agent. You have silica, you have, um, kaolin clay, French green clay, uh, tapioca starch, arrowroot starch, corn starch, corn flour, uh, rice starch is another one you're going to see a lot more of. And zinc oxide powder is an anti-caking agent as well. So you'll see these ingredients more than talc, you know, as, as, as manufacturers try to get away from talc. Honestly, consumer demand is what's going to win out in the end and, and clearly it has and Johnson Johnson simply decided to stop putting out their talc baby powder. Is that is that the the worst thing to happen to the world? Probably not. I mean now we've got cornstarch based, based baby powder. Okay. But you know I guess the consumer has learned nothing like this this whole litigation and this whole process we as consumers we've learned nothing and so now we're going to go after talc free marketing but you really have to ask yourself if you're not worried about talc what's to say that these non that that other ingredients anti-caking agents i mean if you're worried about talc getting taken up into the female genital tract and you know potentially maybe getting into the ovaries if you're worried about that risk like why are you going to be okay with cornstarch or uh silica uh, silica can also cause foreign body granulomas and can also cause lung disease when inhaled, silicosis. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be in, like, I mean, the bottom, the bottom line, the end result of all of this is still the same. Do not, like, in terms of our knowledge, the advancement of human knowledge, we know that you should not inhale, ingest, or inject, or put on a, an area of wounded skin large quantities of an anti-caking agent like that's not recommended but it was never recommended and we've known that from the beginning so i don't know i find things like this frustrating because it's a lot of money it's a lot of time it's a lot of hype it's a lot of fear mongering and it gets it, i mean we really haven't learned too much you know the jama study is good you know it, it gives good evidence that there's no association with talc and uh and ovarian cancer but are they going to do are we going to look into these other ingredients like that's the thing what how is the process going to change in terms of regulation of ingredients like as 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 manufacturers replace talc and they're already doing it i mean as they replace talc with these other ingredients are we gonna like assay these new ingredients for asbestos contamination are we going to like try and conduct large-scale epidemiologic studies on exposure to these ingredients and ovarian cancer like i don't know it seems like what what are we replacing here i 
I don't really know. You know, I, I just find these things kind of frustrating. There are a lot of, it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, and at the end of it all, do we really learn anything? There's gonna be a sector of the con consumer market that it's really, you know, anytime they hear that something is absorbed or detected in the body, they're fearful of that, and that's fine. And they make their purchasing decisions based on that. There's a sector of the market who is loyal to Johnson & Johnson and is fine with the, those personal care products and will continue to buy those things. And then there are people who are in between who you know, probably either didn't know this went on because they don't have, they're not powdering baby bottoms or you know, they just don't care and you know, they're not really gonna change their behaviors either way. Um, you know, they'll, they'll buy something that says talc free and, and care and not care, you know, they won't be seeking that out. So I, I don't know how much it really changes things. Anyways, you guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.